Welcome to part two of our series, where we are modeling Lucky Lindy's Spirit of St. Louis monoplane, using a series of imported images to model around. We left off in part one of the series with all of our reference images imported, including three main views and a few of these bulkhead shapes. We also have our main side view outline already sketched. In this part of the series, we will sketch in our various bulkhead profile shapes and guide curves in order to loft the fuselage shape. Recall in part one, we relabeled all of our reference planes to make them easier to navigate. And note that I did the same thing with the sketches that contain my various bulkhead images. So let's just move front to back and start sketching our profiles, starting on the front bulkhead plane. This is where the nose cone terminates, and I know it is perfectly round, so I'm just going to sketch a circle that I make sure is snapped to the outline of my fuselage. And I'll use the Convert Entities tool to copy the vertical line associated with this bulkhead and just go ahead and trim away to create a fully enclosed half circle. Bulkhead A is a simple oval shape. I already know the minor axis dimension that works here, so I'm going to go ahead and dimension this bulkhead shape. But you could also just do this visually. Notice that just as with the front bulkhead shape, I have the vertical line drawn in to make this a fully enclosed sketch, which is important to maintain throughout our bulkhead sketches. Now we start getting into a more unique profile shape with bulkhead B. I'm going to unhide my sketch titled bulkhead B picture, and I'll sketch on the plane labeled B to lay out this profile. As you'll see, I'm just using a few arcs to create this shape, and I'll fill at the sharp corners so I can control the softness of the edges. So there is the first of the three uniquely shaped bulkheads. I'll follow this same process for bulkheads C and D, and the rear bulkhead, which is just a simple rectangular shape. I have two more bulkhead profiles I need to draw in on the planes labeled Leading Edge and Cowling End but I don't have images that I can import to sketch on top of, so we'll just have to wing it. No pun intended. I'm going to use the 3D sketch tool to draw a guide curve on the side of the fuselage that we can make sure we snap to on our last two bulkhead sketches. To enter the 3D sketch tool, select the drop down under Sketch in the Command Manager, and select 3D Sketch. This allows you to draw sketches in all three dimensions rather than on a single plane. Now let's use the spline tool and simply snap each spline point to the center point of each of our bulkhead sketches. And we can unhide our top view image to make sure we're happy with the shape of this curve in relation to the image. Now that I'm happy with that, I'm going to sketch our last two bulkheads using the same technique as the previous bulkhead sketches, ensuring the arced side of this sketch is snapped to the 3D sketched guide curve. With all our bulkhead profiles sketched, we can begin lofting our fuselage. I'm going to do this with three separate lofts due to the uniquely curved top portion of the cow, so we need to split our main outline into separate guide curves. We'll start by lofting the front portion of the cowling, so let's hide the profiles I don't need for now, and I'll sketch on the right plane using the Convert Entities tool to copy the top line, bottom line, and this vertical line where this portion of the cowling terminates from our main outline sketch. And I'll use the trim tool to trim away the rear portion of the bottom line that we don't need. Now let's follow a similar process off of the 3D sketched side guide curve. 
I'll enter the 3D sketch environment and again use convert entities to copy the already drawn line. Now let's sketch in a construction line where this portion of the cowling terminates. So I can then use the trim tool to trim away the rear portion of this 3D sketch. And now we're ready for our first loft. For now, I'll hide the unneeded sketches for our first loft. In the command manager, navigate to lofted boss slash base. To create the loft, we will first select our four profiles from front to back and ensure that the control points are all snapped to the same point on each sketch as shown here. Now in the Loft Property Manager, click in the box under Guide Curves to begin selecting our three guide curves. Now notice when I select this top guide curve, a small dialog box automatically opens. This is called the Selection Manager, and this occurs when you attempt to use a sketch that contains multiple lines. The Selection Manager allows you to have multiple guide curves in a single sketch, rather than having to draw separate sketches for every single guide curve. So you can use this to your advantage to keep your sketch count down. So let's just select our three guide curves, and this looks pretty good, so we'll click on the green check mark to create the loft. Now let's follow that same process for the rear portion of the cowling. First I'll unhide the sketches I need to reference, and I'll create my three guide curve sketches, again using the Convert Entities tool and Trim Tools. Again, enter the Lofted Boss tool, select the two profiles, and then select the three guide curves to create the loft. And I'll smooth out the connection between these two lofts a bit with a 20 thousandths of an inch fillet. Finally, let's unhide the rest of our sketches and set up our guide curves for the final loft. Into the loft tool once again and select the profiles in order. And then we'll select our guide curves. We'll do something a bit different with this loft. We want to make sure the start of this loft blends nicely with the previous cowling loft. So in the drop down here where it says start slash end constraints, 
Under Start Constraints, select Tangency to Face to make the faces of this loft tangent to the outer faces of the intersecting loft. Just ensure the correct faces are highlighted in blue. So here is the first 3D portion of our Spirit of St. Louis model. Join us for part 3 of this series where we will be modeling in the wing and the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. Stay tuned.